My name is David Marcus, and I graduated from Drug Court in 1994. I will have 20 years clean and sober in August. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be here representing the many thousands of successful graduates of the Miami-Dade County Drug Court, the very first drug court in the nation, an idea born from the vision of Judge Herb Klein, who wasn't afraid to think outside the box, go against popular opinion, and try something different. He realized that lives could be saved and communities bettered if drug addicts who wanted help were treated as persons with a disease rather than as criminals. He knew what statistics have now proven, that drug court would help people and be more successful at reducing recidivism than any other program in the criminal justice system. I started using drugs when I was 13 and I never stopped. I became a lawyer, I got married and had a son. What had started out as a way to fit in and have fun turned into an addiction nightmare. I was living a horrible double life. On the outside, a successful professional and family man. On the inside, a scared, desperate drug addict who was always afraid that the drugs would run out, who took ridiculous risks to obtain drugs, and who put drugs ahead of everything else in life. I desperately wanted to stop, but didn't have the courage to admit that help was needed. I got arrested and breathed a sigh of relief because I knew the war was over, that I would have to deal with my addiction. I started drug court as just another hopeless, hope to die drug addict, broken in spirit and empty inside. Judge Stanley Goldstein, the very first drug court judge, set a firm but empathetic tone in the courtroom and provided what all addicts needed to recover, hope and dignity which you all give drug addicts every day when you go to work and help us. Drug Court introduced me to the recovery community, offered counseling and helped rebuild my life and change my thinking. The lasting and permanent benefits of Drug Court are family relationships, career, serenity, and self-respect, a foundation upon which to live a drug-free, recovery-based lifestyle for the past 20 years. That foundation has helped me through difficult times as well. When I had 10 years clean, my wife of 23 years was diagnosed with cancer and died a horrible death five months later. I had a 15-year-old son to raise and was a lost soul. My recovery foundation, the one built in drug court, kept me clean. Today, my son is a 24-year-old, well-adjusted college graduate who's employed. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I was blessed to fall in love again and will celebrate a wedding anniversary next month with my lovely wife, Deborah. My journey began in the halls of justice and continues today in the rooms of a 12-step program. I owe it all to Drug Court, an inspired program that has helped thousands of people from all walks of life become productive members of society. Thank you for the valuable work that you do. Thank you for what you've given me. You've given addicts like me the chance to transform ourselves into the people we always dreamed we could be. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deborah Marcus, and I am the wife of a drug court graduate. As you just heard, in a couple of months, my husband David will be celebrating 20 years of recovery. <clears throat> Without drug court, that would not be possible. When I met David, he had already been through drug court. He had 10 years clean. He had a successful law practice, a teenage son, and he had just lost his wife of 23 years after a brief and horrible battle with cancer. I witnessed firsthand what you, through drug court and his recovery, helped him do. 
I saw this devastated man show up, be present, gentle, and loving for his then 15-year-old son. I literally watched him stand instead of crumble when his world did. <clears throat> Today, he and his son have a very close relationship, and he and I are celebrating six years of marriage. I know exactly where and how it all began for him, with you and those like you, who took a chance and gave him a choice and changed his life forever. And because you did, I get to have this amazing life with this incredible man who's my best friend. I, his son, and our community are the ultimate beneficiaries of what drug court offers. You've made a difference in all of our lives, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tina Olvera. I graduated from the very first family drug court it was established in Reno, Nevada in 1994. Founder it was the Honorable Judge Charles McGee. I graduated in 2001. <laughs> My journey started when I was about 14 years old. I, I discovered alcohol, so very quickly I became an alcoholic. I like to party with friends a lot. I threw my schooling out the door because it was too much fun going out the back door of the school to go party. That slowly went into, or actually it quickly went into um, using meth because somebody introduced it to me and it was a way that I could drink longer. I could stay up longer and drink. So I ended up getting addicted to meth. I, I was addicted to meth until I was about 30, 31 years old. I ended up getting arrested and I spent 28 days in the jail for a seatbelt warrant, which was a blessing. I had my spiritual awakening then. I was a single mother of three kids, pregnant with my fourth ch child. And at that point, I didn't know what I was gonna do with my child. Um, I was using in the beginning of the pregnancy. Um, thank God I had a judge that made me keep my son. Sorry. And now he is 13 years old. He's my sports football king. Um, oh gosh, I didn't think I was going to be so emotional. <laughs> um, my family drug court that I went through, when I w went through it, I was a broken person. I was so kicked down by life that I didn't believe I was a beautiful person until I had a person, a judge that was telling me how beautiful I was. And then at the end of the drug court, I finally believed and I was able to shine as beautiful as he made me feel. I have five children now, two grandchildren, and one of them's right there behind me. Um, I just want to say thank you for everything that you guys do. I celebrate 14 years clean and sober. I I have the opportunity seven and a half years ago to work in the family drug courts as a mentor mom. So now I help change people's lives on a regular basis. I get paid to change people's lives. <laughs> it is the most rewarding job in the whole entire world, as you guys know. I am able to help another child smile again. I am able to help a mother and a father or single parents feel like they're important and then that what they have done in their lives is not as horrible as what it feels like at that moment. I give them hope, I try to at least, um, that life will change and it's for the better. I am so truly blessed now thanks to my recovery and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I do thank you guys. So they asked me to speak, and uh, I didn't quite know how to sum it all up. So I wrote a poem for my mom. 
and it goes like this. Scared and confused, where did you go? You're not the same mom that we used to know. You're here, but you're gone. You don't act the same. We can see the guilt, and we know you're ashamed. I remember the day when you didn't come back, and they took us all away, and you were gone just like that. Kids' cottage was fine, but we missed you a lot. We found out why you left. You never gave up. You fought. Before we knew it, the waiting was over, and back came our mom, but this time clean and sober. I can't tell you enough how happy we all are, reunited with our mom, our hero, our superstar. I just want to say thank you. Our hearts have been warmed. Thanks to the family drug courts, our mom is transformed. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Zach. And my mom is a mentor mom in the family drug court. I never had to grow up with all the mistakes she made in her life. But the one thing I can tell you is the good things she's done in her life. And our family has a good impact because of it. Um, we've been through a lot. But ever since the family drug court came in our lives, our family has been great. It's been the best. And we are very grateful that they have come into our lives because if they didn't, I would be afraid that our family would be separated and we wouldn't be with our loved one. The family drug court have, has done a lot for us in the past several years. I'm very grateful that they have come. Ever since they have come, my mom is clean and sober, and we are a happy family. I thank you, Mom, for the stable life you've given me, and I thank the Family Drug Court for giving us our family opportunities like this one to speak on stage. Thank you. My name is Annalise Stein, and in 2011, I graduated from Juvenile Drug Court in St. Mary's County, Maryland. If it wasn't for these... <laughs> if it wasn't for these pioneering drug courts, I would not be standing before you, this blessed woman I am today. I was 16 when my mom caught me smoking marijuana on the back porch and proceeded to call the police department. At first, I thought that this was unfair. But, not, but now looking back, I was on, my life was on a path of destruction. For example, I had run away from home and had an altercation with a teacher at my school. I would ended up in my office where my mom was waiting for me there. I pushed her into a door and I tried to take a swing at the officer. I was then arrested and sent to the jail to be processed. After that night, approximately three to four months, I entered the drug court. My first impression was this would be easy that I wasn't going to change. After a few slip-ups, I was put on house arrest. I soon learned that everyone was trying to help and, and that helped and cared about us. I started to change my ways and worked on completing the pro program. My main focus was school, work, and trying to devote my time into community services, which I enjoyed. I eventually stopped trying to commit suicide, drinking, doing the drugs, and skipping classes. I was soon on my way to being a happier, healthier me. This program wasn't that easy for me, but if it wasn't for Judge Stom, the probation officers, and my school, I don't know where I'd be today. How interesting is that? Here we have a system where everyone is working together for the greater good. The, difference, the defense attorneys and the county prosecutors are chasing the same goal. By the spring of 2011, the end of my junior year, I had shown that I had changed enough and was ready to finish the program. Drug court created enough space in my life so that I could take action on achieving sobriety addressing childhood trauma. I was, being, I was able to begin healing. After this program, my mom and I can now talk without our cell phones. We have a thriving and loving relationship. I finished high school with straight A's. I've been to a few schools and told them my story so I could help the youth not make the same mistakes I made. I want to get back to the community. I now work for an international shipping union. I'm currently engaged and will be married in September. 
I have many more goals to achieve and hopefully one day I will reach them. A simple quote that I've begun to live my life by is a representation of the phoenix. The perfect metaphor for drug court reads, out of the ashes I die to live and into the ashes I live to die. Drug court saved me from the ashes of my destruction and allowed me to re be reborn. Thank you all for doing what you do every day and thank you for saving my life. Have a great conference. Hi, I'm Tracy Lynn Brown. I'm on Elise's mom. At the point that I caught her doing the drugs on my back porch, I was at my rope's end. People were telling me to turn my back on her and let her go to the world that she wanted to be in. But I knew I couldn't do that. If it hadn't have been for her being sent to the drug court program, I don't think that either one of us would be where we're at today. We would probably be hating each other more. And with that, I have to say thank you to the drug court program in St. Mary's County. There's not very many of them and I'd never heard of them until this point. And you guys do put a lot of hard work in every day and for that, I thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Derek Graham. I'm a graduate in the year 2000, July 2000, from the Las Cruces DWI court uh, in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And that was the, thank you. That was the first court in the country that actually utilized the ignition interlock system as a part of its uh, program. So I am very honored and privileged to be here today. When I see all the things that I see, it just is astonishingly amazing what you all do and what you've done for me is really I can't, I can't speak it in full comprehension. But I'd like to tell you a little bit about my story. I, I will say this, I do credit the drug court program as being one of the most major, major important things and events that's happened in my life, all to the positive. I'm so grateful for that. I had two DWIs. Um, I had a, a DWI before drug, before drug court or DWI court in our community. And then I had one after it was established. My first one was in 1992. And at that time, you know, the penalties weren't as harsh. And unfortunately, um, DWI court had not been established yet by our local judge, Oscar Fritz. That didn't happen until about 1995. Um, if I had, it may have changed the course of events, but maybe not because I probably wasn't ready. You know, at that point in time in my life, um, I thought I was a moderate drinker. I got caught drinking and driving, and you know I was scared, so I quit drinking for about a year. Um, I actually, I moderated it a lot, but then th then I started getting into this progression of um, a full-blown alcoholism, um, and you know I neglected my family, my wife. I can't imagine why she stayed with me. But bless her heart, she's a very loyal woman that she did for the three or four years that it took before um, I got a real awakening. My daughter, I have a daughter. I essentially missed her life for the most part growing up between the ages of about five and nine. So those are moments that I can really never get back. Um, I tried to stop several times. I was trapped, I could not get out. And then fortunately, I had my second DWI, and drug court was there. Um, it's interesting, I didn't get sentenced to drug court my first go round and the first sentencing a visiting judge was in town. Um, it wasn't until I went to get my ignition interlock system that I, they told me at the DMV I would have to go back and get a court order for it. So I went back and thought I could just get my piece of paper signed. It turned out Judge Fritz wanted to see me. And he uh, said to me, you know, Derek, I was gone when you were here, and I think um, you might be a guy that could benefit from my new DWI program. So I'll tell you what, I'll sign your paper, but I want you to enroll. I was pissed. <laughs> I thought I could lie and cheat my way out of it again. But God bless Judge Fritz for caring enough about me. He could see where I was at, and he put me in the program. So I am so grateful for that. You know, I went through the whole program, the counselors, everyone involved with it. I couldn't believe that they were taking such a personal interest in me. And somewhere through that process, I became willing 
and got a desire to change the way that I live. And drug court and the people in it gave me the foundation and the tools that I needed to be able to have in order to be able to do that. My life changed dramatically, and it's all because of that. I want to thank each and every one of you for what you do. I want to, I want to encourage you to keep doing what you do because it helps people like all of us, and it saved my life. And I've been sober since May 1st of 1998. If you'd have told me that 17 years ago, I would have said, no way. So thank you all. Good morning. My name is Ben, and I'm a grateful recovering addict. I'm a graduate of the class of 1998. Miami-Dade Drug Court, the first drug court in the country. <laughs> My first year in law school in 1972, I developed an addiction to gambling. Uh, my drug of choice at that time was playing the ponies. This 25-year addiction followed me through a very successful licensed criminal justice system in Baltimore, Washington, D.C., and it culminated with my appointment as the Chief United States Probation Pretrial Services Officer for the Southern District of Florida in 1995. Um, I moved to Miami, actually moved into Tim Murray's home. He moved into my home in College Park, Maryland, because he went to work for the Justice Department under Janet Reno. I took my addiction to Miami, and during the summer of 1998, being an addict, I started using cocaine. I used cocaine from the summer of 1998 until my higher power intervened and caused me a bottom that resulted in me being arrested, purchasing $10 worth of cocaine from an open air drug market in Miami. When I was arrested, the minute they put the handcuffs on me, I surrendered. I knew my life had become unmanageable, and it took this intervention for me to deal with the fact that I was an addict. This was not an ordinary arrest. This was an arrest that was followed by a local news station with cameras. So when they looked at my glove compartment, saw my gold shield, held me in custody until 11 o'clock and paraded me in front of the national media. I knew Judge Goldstein because I was introduced to him through Tim Murray. And as, as I indicated, I had hid this addiction from the business community, friends, and relatives. However, that first day before Judge Goldstein, I realized that I'd hit a bottom. And because I was an addict, I pursued recovery with the same vigor that I proceeded to ruin my life by using drugs and also gambling. I continue to be very active in the recovery community in South Florida. In fact, five years ago, I went back to the Miami-Dade Drug Court and volunteered on a full-time basis as an assistant. Two years ago, I was offered a position as the administrative liaison for the Miami-Dade Drug Court and I became an official card-carrying member of the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. <laughs> One of my prime precepts for recovery is you can't keep what you have unless you give it away. And this position started out as a part-time position, but it became a full-time position. And as the current judge, Judge Jerry Cohen, said one week into the job, what we're doing here is operating a triage. And even though I've had a very respected life and career in the criminal justice field, I can say without a doubt, the work that I've done, part of drug court for the last five years has been the most rewarding aspect of my career. I owe drug court a debt of gratitude because I'll be celebrating two seminal events this year. August 4th, I'll be celebrating my 46th anniversary to my lovely wife, Lynn, who has stayed with me and endured this agony. And on December 8th, I will celebrate my 16th 
year in recovery. What we do on the front lines of addiction is a very difficult job. You're not going to get rich doing this, but it is very rewarding. And I say to you, that morning when you don't feel like going to work, you get up and you're feeling a little weathered, which I've experienced and we all have, I look forward to going to work to try to save a sick and suffering addict. I know what that's like. So I say to you today, keep doing that voodoo that you do so well. Thank you. My name is Lynn. I'm Ben's wife. And when addiction crept into our home, I recognized the symptoms. Still, the chaos, turmoil, and desperation grew. And I knew that recovery would have to be his choice. My choice was to stay, and I prayed a lot. Thankfully, when he found his bottom, there was drug court. It was the support of drug court and the lessons of recovery that saved our lives, <clears throat> revived our family, and with his dedication to giving back, strengthened our community. So to the wonderful people of drug court. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your great work. <laughs>